Welcome back to the Arabella Boathouse, 100 miles from the sea, where Steve, who has never sailed before, is well on his way to finishing his first sailboat. These videos and progress on the boat would not be possible without the generosity of all of our supporters on Patreon. Thanks to all of you contributing at any level. Check the description below to see how you can become a patron yourself. On today's episode, work begins on Arabella's rudder. So the first job is to find its spot on the lofting floor, which has been stored in the garage for the past five years. It sure does. I haven't locked it in. Mm, we won't count. Uh, this red line here should be the rudder. Our stern post. Oh, stern post rudder. Yeah. Oh, boom, hey. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. okay. So we need this one. There's a proper pressure here. Okay. And there's the shaft. Yeah. Stern post. Yep. Okay. I like this one. <laughs> it's a big puzzle. It is. How many years ago were you lofting? Woohoo! 2018? 17? No, 16. No, 17. Yep. Nice. Bingo bango. That lines up, that lines up, that lines up, that lines up. Yeah, there's the shape of the rudder. Whew. All the colored pencils are just like gone. But this is enough. That's all I need. Cool. Beautiful. I think that light is right, you might be able to see this. So here's the top of our keel timber. And here's the inner stern post, the inner face of it. There's the outer edge, so that's Arabella's stern post. And then right here is the rudder. And the rudder comes up around, comes in. Here's the very tip of our stern post. Here's our shear line. So now we just need to make a very nice pattern for this so that we can start to mill up and pick out some lumber. I am very glad I kept this. We could have relofted it, but this is, uh, this is way faster. <laughs> okay, this is definitely gonna be a two person operation. <laughs> But there is our pattern. So according to Atkin, the rudder will be made from two and a half inch thick white oak, which we have. It tapers at the foot to one and a half inches and is streamlined aft to five eighths. So we're gonna be two and a half by the stern post here. And we're gonna be one and a half down in here. And we're going to be about five eighths out here. And that's, that's all Akin has to say. And if we consult Bud, I trust that the above has put you in a proper frame of mind to appreciate the other kind of rudder, hung outdoors for all to see, vulnerable to attacks by pirates, and terminating the length of the vessel in a no-nonsense lack of overhang. Now find the best piece of oak that ever grew on the cold hillside 
a plank sawn from near the center of the butt log, blue in color with interlocked grain and a tough, mean look about it. Joint one edge of this plank absolutely straight, lay it in waiting until you installed the grudgeons on the transom and the stern post. And that is what we have here. So these are all from low in the tree and they're all quarter sawn. So not only are they pretty with gray fleck, but they should be pretty stable. playing around with the final layout before I bring these down to their total final dimensions and join them together. And we're working inside today because it's sunny right now, but the rain is coming and I don't want to be rushing to bring this in. So when I mill all these up, they're very close to the same thickness, but I got to run them through the planer as a batch, get them down to their final thickness. And I have to joint all of the mating faces here so that when this whole thing gets clamped and bolted together, it stays nice and flat and it doesn't want to bow. So these all need to be perfectly 90 and mating up really, really well so that we can glue them. But before I do that final thickness planing and joining, I want to knock off anything that I definitely don't need. So there's no point in planing or joining this material down here. I can hack that off. Start over here. And what I'm going to have you do is hold that saw blade right against that. How much do you think this thing's going to weigh when it's all done? Oh, looks really heavy. Yeah. And we're going to have to carry it around to the back of the boathouse and stand it up and attach it to the boat. One piece? It's gonna be one piece, yeah, when it's all done.
Well, I think it's about time to start marking out for some bolts and some drifts. I gotta pick up a longer length of pipe, but it's enough for right now for me to mark out the territory for these. So I measured in the stern of the boat, and if we put this one about 16 inches below the prop shaft, and this one over 24 inches above the prop shaft, we'll miss the bolts that go through the stern post. There's one about here and one down here. So I want to make sure that we dodge those. And I'm not going to do the final cutout until this is all bolted together and any of the, the play is taken out of it. But we've got it traced out. We got everything laid out. So now I can mark where these go. And I know that when we go to fasten through the stern, we're not going to be hitting any fasteners because that would really be a bummer. And I know that we don't want to put any fasteners through this section because we also don't want to hit them when we put the, uh, the pintles and grungeons in. So we'll chase those out and uh, get to laying out for some fasteners. first round of holes they need to become a bit bigger they're half inch now we'll bore them out to five eighths now this is a tricky bit of drilling this side of the rudder here is going to get shaped down to only five eighths so we actually need to terminate these bolts in this outer piece we can't go to the edge we can't bring a five eighths rod all the way up to the edge and we need to make sure that these all stay flat and aligned so what we're doing for drilling Popping these out, and squaring down the lines. And then I have another square set here for exactly center on our two and a half. So now we have our bullseye basically on each side of exactly where we want to drill. Sight stick. Just going to clamp that on parallel with the line. I'm going to take my twist bit, put it in that center, started by the four snare, and I can look down and split the bit in half with the stick. I know I'm centered that way, and then I can glance from the side and judge the height. So. And I don't want to drill all the way through. I just want to drill about half the way through. So for this, that's not very much. Some of these I'm going to have to drill quite a ways. Okay, now we flip and drill from the other side. I have to do that for all of these pieces.
So this is the very trailing edge of the rudder. Right now it's two and a half inches, but the section in here needs to come down to five eighths. And the lower section down here is about one and a half. So because we are putting in five eighths diameter bolts and our nuts and washers are obviously bigger than five eighths, we can't run these all the way out to the outboard edge. And even if we were to counterbore these in a little bit, we're still really going to be hitting the washers and the nuts and not having much meat there. So one of the solutions is to fasten with drifts, uh, which we're going to do. So this one's going to be a drift that's just going to dead end in this timber. Uh, and there's another drift up here that'll pin it. We want to make sure that there's a few places where we have some through bolts holding this on. So the solution for this is to cut these pockets that we can put the nut and the washer down in. So we've got our line and we've marked out a little square where we want that pocket to be where the bolt should end. And that is what we're looking to do. So here's our bolt hole. We drill down with the force snare. I have to go deep enough that we can put in the nut and washer. So I need this much clearance here underneath the hole. So I'm going to drill that a little bit deeper and put the washer in there and go until the holes line up. And then we'll have to square this side out so that it sits flush against the back of the washer. So, so here's one that's finished. And that bolt will slide in like that. I might have to open this up a little bit more to get the wrench in there. We might be able to wedge it with a screwdriver and leave the socket here as small as we can. But we will see. in like that. Okay, we're going to uh, use the one-to-one, -one, not the high performance. Okay. So it's the same one we use for plank scarfs. It's the one that we use whenever we're like doing more critical uh, oak yeah. glue ups. Um, is that stuff inside? Yeah. Yeah, it's in the paint and varnish room. This stuff's not as uh, stay put as a thick so, but it's not terrible. Yeah, it's thicker than I remember it. It's also helpful that it's cool out today. Oh, that's true. This would be runny air if it was 90.
So this is basically the, the same thing that you would do if you were gonna make a, like a farmhouse style table out of some big planks. So our grain and most of this rudder is running this way, which means it's gonna swell this way. And our board, encapsulating the end, is not gonna swell lengthwise. So it's really important when you do breadboard ends like this that they're not glued and that the fasteners that are in there have enough play that the timber can swell and shrink a little bit and it's not gonna rip itself apart. I cut this and fit it with this rudder being full thickness. This outer edge here needs to get brought down to one and a half inches down there and up here, it needs to be brought down to three quarters, five eighths, somewhere in that ballpark. So if I were to shape all of this and then try to fit this, it would be a lot more challenging. Much easier when everything's flat, you can cut square. Now I'm gonna to wanna to put a few mechanical fasteners through here, but those are gonna make fairing this difficult. So by covering it in a few coats of paint, I'm gonna add a couple more and not letting any of that paint totally set up yet. I'm gonna shove this on there and clamp it overnight and let that paint dry. And that will effectively glue this on enough that I can use the power planer and do all of the shaping, put a couple fasteners in it. But when this hits the water and wants to swell and move, that paint is not gonna stop it. We got paint squeeze out. <laughs> Oh man, do I love this tool. I'm feeling a little rusty with it though. It's been, it's been quite a while since I've swung the ads. So thanks for following and I uh, hope you enjoyed us working on the rudder here. Next week, I'm not really sure what we're gonna get into. We might cover what everybody's diligently working on upstairs right now, which is the cockpit, the house sides and the house top. Maybe we'll continue on with the rudder. I'm not quite sure. Either way, really hope to see you here next week. My ads work should be a little smoother. Looking forward to getting this rust shaken off and become acquainted with this old tool again. And thanks to everyone who's supported or contributed in some way, shape, or form. There's no way we'd be able to make these videos and keep up this blistering rate of progress without your help. So thank you very much, and we'll see you here every Friday.